Well, it's time for me to do something other than making asteroids. So I grabbed the only two pens I could find. And Kat, don't even think of coming over here. I'm busy. Go try to find your mouse to eat. Anyway, so here's a crab leg. Here's a pen. Does the pen even have ink in it? Yes, it does. So I'm just going to, I'm just going to hold this in my hand and just draw elements of it. And they're all going to be overlapping and who knows what, Kitty, don't get up here. Don't even get up here. No, no. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm trying to... Kitty, get away from me. Go. Okay, so now what have I done? This one then comes up here. This is little spikes. What's wrong with this pen? paper I have a feeling is not going to work well with my water. But we'll find out right now. Okay. Brush. Water. It's sort of, this water is dissolving some of the ink. But it sort of sucks it into the paper at the same time. It's not really meant to do watercolor, which is essentially what I'm doing. Okay. Are we done? Add to shopping cart $1 million. Artists never blame their materials, but this brush sucks. This paper sucks. Does this pen, in fact, suck too? Oh, why not? Let's all suck. Am I in a mood? Okay, there's one. Okay, now we'll turn it over and we'll draw it this way behind it. How's that for clever? Or so we have this thing coming down like this. Ridge, here's that little ridge at the top. My brother and I watched Fake or fortune? And it was a Henry Moore sculpture that was found in a garden and it turned out not to be. No, oh, that's the one we watched, we watched too last night. The other one was about a Jérôme. And I would have thought it was not very good, but I mean, not a Jerome, because the uh, anatomy of the hand and the arms of the Arab en prie, Arab in prayer, was 
very clumsy and out of proportion. And uh, evidently, according to the Jérôme expert at the time he painted that, he was not very good at drawing the figure. So by the time he ended up drawing the gladiator, waiting for the signal from the emperor whether to put the poor guy out of his misery, thumbs up or thumbs down, um, he learned how to draw the figure better, I guess. Anyway, this little point right here reminds me of the Henry Moore sculpture, which turned out not to be a Henry Moore, but was a sculptress who uh, was friends of Henry Moore and invited her to visit invited him to visit her place, which is where the sculpture was found. And consequently, wah, wah, they didn't have a million dollar thing that they had been using as a doorstop anyway. So whatever, do they deserve to have it if they were using it, even if they thought it was a, they thought it was a Henry Moore at the time and they used it as a doorstop. So let's, um, do they deserve the millions of dollars had it been a Henry Moore? Probably not. What are your thoughts? No thoughts. No one has thoughts today. Okay, so there's two views. Let's see if I can get a third in here before this thing breaks apart. How different is there we go, there's a different view. I think I'm going to add some, maybe a pinkish background, I don't know, just for shits and giggles, like why not? Orangish background, maybe. <clears throat> crazy dreams last night, I'm just I'm remembering. I have quite a number of dreams of my ex-boyfriend. I dream about him more now than I ever did when he was my, in fact, boyfriend. Funny how that works. And I never, I don't dream about him. I, I, he's always um, in company with his husband that he has now that he didn't have then. So, and, you know, it's all happy families. We're all getting along together. But also, it, it often includes my ex's parents, which are very strange that they're in, they're in the mix. Okay, this is almost completely light here, this particular one. I 
and it gets dark down here. This brush does not hold very much water. Wow. I think for the background I need to get a better brush. Fatter brush. I want the background to be very loosey-goosey and sort of wet and full and blobby. Okay, that's, I think that's enough for this one. Okay, do I have room for one more? How about an upside-down one right down here like that? See what I'm doing? You can't, I mean. There. Done with the drawing part. Soon we'll do the background part and then we'll call it done. So get ready, get by your phone. Operators are standing by. One million dollars, be the first caller. For our first 20 callers. You have a special gift. Jay, tell them about the gift. Well, Bob, your special gift will be the actual paint brushes that Mr. Gustafson is using to create this masterpiece. So you too can can make art just like his. See? Okay, now, background. Should I make it sort of red, white, and blue? I think I'll make it sort of red, white, and blue. The reason I'm making it sort of red, white, and blue is because I have a I've made some other artwork up at the lake with with um, oh shit fuck let's fuck that up with red white and blue Oh, maybe this would go with those. I like the sound of the bell. Ding. So in the garage, right outside this very 
room I'm in is a porch that has three big boxes of standardized frames that I think will hold exactly this size paper. I think this is 9 by 12 and I think that's what the frames are. And uh, there must be three dozen of them. And I think they're I'm going to pack them up and have them brought to the lake. And then drawings that my dad did, watercolors that he did and I did, and maybe my niece, we can put those in these frames and have sort of a gallery. In the hall, we don't have a lot of wall space up there. There's, there's lots of windows. We have a lot of art up there already. So um, these standardized frames could be. organized, you know, on a grid pattern, which might be nice. So am I done? What do you think? What do you think? Do I need to put a little bit of red there? No. That'll be an un uncarmined area. Okay, one down. Do I do it again? Should I try again? There's white ink, so let's just try this, see what this is like with maybe do one with this is blue and I'm going to make this more angular I think Okay, now first do this. Still some pink in this, which is fine. How did I fuck this up? How did that happen? How did I screw that up, Pierre Gustafson? Were you not paying attention?
the last time I drew these things was, God, I was in college. We were in Florida for a vacation, and for some reason, I was bored, which is not hard to do in Florida. So here's some white. I don't even know if this is going to work. It's working a little bit. Come on. White. So I just destroyed a piece of art I did nearly 40 years ago when I was in grad school and it was quite a, I don't know, was it a tour de force or just a tour or just something else. But it was fun while it lasted. And I just took a exacto blade to it and put it out of my misery. Okay, now do I put a background on this? I think I need to, what happens if I put a, that same carmine on this? Well, we'll try it. Why not? I think I made a mistake. <laughs> what, what are your thoughts? Did I fuck up or not? Oh, God. I think if I sort of do it like this, it'll be fine. Sort of implying that the, the carmine are shadows. What do you think? Okay, now I'm scrubbing. Now it's turning into mush. Do some scrubbing down there. Maybe make it a look. I oh, don't see that was a mistake. Oh well. Mistakes happen. Factory second. Should have stopped it with just that one. I 
I think when this if this if this dries, when this dries, it might work or not. It's just it looks so dark here. I think it's just well. Let's, let's see. Add to shopping cart for a million dollars. Okay, two down. Do I want to do it again? Ooh, let's see what happens when we just use white on black. Is this silver ink? That's gray. Let's just use white. Yeah, you like when I just use white, don't you? Away from me, mosquito. This paper is just sucking the ink right into it. It works fine if the if the ink is sort of dry brushy. The paint is sort of dry brushy, but when it's wet, it just pulls it right in. This side is as Tuberances here, and this ridge is very distinct. Nice sharp thing here. That's what that Henry Moore sculpture had was this big, sort of toothy protuberance. Very sharp. The thing that sort of made the experts doubt the authenticity of the Moor and attribute, then attributing it, in fact, to the friend of Henry Moore was that the material used was some sort of aluminum alloy, which he never used, but she used a lot. So I think it's always interesting, you know, when they, when you see these shows like History Detectives, they, they do all this legwork that, you know, they go to the library in Syracuse, New York, and they go to the, they track down you know, the person's first grade English teacher and she's dead and I don't know, it's just, they do all of this stuff and then they finally go to the internet and just find the answer. And you'd think that, 
you know, the easiest way to prove something. They could have just started with that. Like, on some of them, they, they do a thread count and find how many threads per inch on a canvas. And that sounds like a very good way to do it, to ascertain some aspect of it. And on other shows, they never turn the painting around. At least they don't do it on camera. Okay. This one almost done. My fellow urban sketchers in Minneapolis went to the state fair and there's one guy that whose drawings I quite love and he he did these very very quick would appear to be very quick drawings of cows and chickens and the livestock that are being judged at the fair. And he used a, he used a um, accordion fold, folded, uh, Chinese book, which was really neat because the, you know, this big long sort of, if you unfold it all, it's this sort of panorama, but he just drew, he wasn't thinking about the whole when he was drawing the parts, so it was, I mean, I don't think he was. Um, three versions of a claw. And this, now that it's dried, it isn't so offensive. It's still offensive, but not as bad. Thanks for watching.